Don't we all want an Alfred? I mean, I would love an Alfred. Um, somebody who is uncomplaining, who keeps the vehicles running, keeps the mower sharp, chops the wood, keeps the fire going, does a bit of cooking, um, always seems to be there and ready and willing. It's, uh, he, he's, he's a dream, really. I mean, he's not a superhero. But in some small, retiring way, I think he could be regarded with a small H as a bit of a hero. I'm delighted that so many generations, not just children, are, are, are quite taken up with these stories and these characters. It's lovely to be part of that fictional universe. Commissioner Gordon is a badass. That's my take on Commissioner Gordon. I don't know how much we'll see of that in, uh, in these movies, but um, I think that's a sort of uh, under-recognized or underappreciated part of who he is because obviously he exists in the world where Batman is the ultimate badass. Um, but, uh, you know, tough guy, ex-Marine, you know, worked his way up and, uh, and uh, can handle himself in, in the world of uh, thugs and bad guys in which he exists playing a scene with, with all of those iconic caped characters uh, was, uh, you know, it's, just, it's like doing a baseball movie or a, or a cowboy movie, you know, it's one of those boyhood fantasy things come true. It's really fun. At the end of uh, BVS, we, um, we leave Bruce, um, you know, fearful that there is an attack coming and needing to, wanting to gather up as many uh, metahumans as he possibly can. So the sort of nascent uh, stages of team building is, is where we're left. And uh, this movie starts with, you know, Bruce actively recruiting and looking and researching and trying to find these superhumans that he's, uh, he believes are out there. JK, he's a perfect uh, Commissioner Gordon. He's got that kind of uh, realism, you know, down where he feels just world weary and, and gritty and feels like a guy who's been working the beat of Gotham, you know, for decades. And uh, he lends a real gravitas to the role. There's a modified Batmobile, which is tricked out to take on the alien race. So it's made a little bit more lethal. And, um, and then there's the Batwing, which is pretty cool. Uh, you know, it's a ship that he flies around in and he's got his huge, like, triple uh, seven that he just flies around when he needs to be transported somewhere and he's building this bigger plane that he wants to be to go longer distances so Bruce Wayne has no shortage of ways to get around he doesn't get uh, he's not met with enthusiasm by everybody that he encounters um, you know some people are a little bit more reluctant to join up be part of the team uh, Ezra you know the flash signs right up, but uh, Aquaman it takes some convincing. Cyborg also takes some convincing uh, from Wonder Woman. But together, we collectively start to assemble this group, and eventually they, they come around and realize that there's a need for us to work together. Batman and, you know, Superman and um, a lot of these core DC characters still don't seem dated. They somehow still work in stories today, and I think that's just the mark of... Uh, characters that are very well drawn and ha uh, that they still have this kind of resonance, you know, that they, the, and that they were invented in the 1930s.